hi guys welcome to chef Gene academy in this video we are going to be looking at live load on highway bridges in my previous video i've already made content on highway bridges where i discuss about the different kind of loadings which include the permanent load and the traffic load then i've also explained extensively on the traffic load specifically on ha loading so in this video i'll be discussing about the second part of the traffic loading which is the hb loading so as we all know traffic load is majorly divided into two we have the ha loading and the hb ha loading as i've defined in the previous video is the loading that represents the normal traffic on highway bridges while the hb loading are loadings that represent abnormal traffics on highway bridges hb loading is a simple is just a single type of load that is being applied on in the structural design of bridges so most of the time we used to have combination of ha and hb loading though we have different kind of load combinations which include combination of dead load and live load which can also include combination of dead load and ha loading or dead load and ha plus hb but this video is just going to be talking about hb loading so the hb loading is represented generally represented by this diagram and this is the major definition of ha loading so this is like a representation of a vehicle and each of these vehicle is divided into four axles that is a vehicle with four axles so you can see this is axle one this is another axle this is another axle this is another axle so each of the axles have different wheels so this is the definition of the hb loading according to the bs standard using the bd 3701 so each axle has four wheel and you can see that the difference between each wheel is one, one meters along the transverse directions but if you are looking at along the horizontal direction that is the longitudinal axis of the vehicle you can see that distance between each of these axes at the beginning is 1.8 and at the end is also 1.8 but the distance between the second and the third axis actually ranges from 6 meters to 11 meters to 16 meters or 21 or 26 so to know the size the dimension you are going to use is actually after you've analyzed and you look at the one that gives the adverse effects on the bridge and from experience engineers have found out that if you have a six meter difference between the second and the third house this actually gives the highest load effect so definitely we now have 1.8 meters at the start 1.8 meters at the end and the, the middle distance is going to be six meters because from experience this is what actually takes give the adverse effect so how do we now estimate hb loading hb loading are estimated in units and you should know that one unit of hb is the same thing as 10 kilo newton per axle that is you know we have four axle for each hb vehicle and each of the axle has four wheel so if you are using an hb of one unit that means each of these are each of these wheel that is for wheel one is 10 kilo newton so that means each of these wheel for one axle is 10 kilo newton that means each of the wheel will be having 2.5 kilo newton per wheel so this wheel we have 2.5 this we have 2.5 this we have 2.5 this we have 2.5 so that is how hb is being considered and from the practice that is from bs from the british standard it is recommended that the minimum hb loading you use for your highway bridges loading is 30. so that means if you have a 30 unit of hb that means on x axle you will be having 300 kilo newton per axle then for you to know the number of the the amount of load to apply for each wheel that is going to be 300 divided by 4 so if you divide 300 by 4 whatever you have is going to be the load on each of the wheels so let's now look at how to actually position your hp loading the positioning of your hb is actually placed you know i told you there are a lot of combinations most of the time 
you combine HA and HB. That is, you apply HA on some part of the bridge, then you apply HB on some other part. So it actually depends on the how you want to load the bridge. But we are not talking about that in this video. So if you like what I'm showing you, you can consider subscribing to the channel, turn on the notification. You can even check my website, chevginacademic.com. I create a lot of content on structural design in which you can study in order to improve you professionally. HB loading is actually positioned, as I've said, it is positioned along the bridge and it is considered as a moving load. So you, most of the time, it's always easier for us to analyze a moving load at a static load. So how do we know where to position the HP? As I told you, let's say you have a bridge. If you have a bridge like this, consider this bridge, then you can see that uh, Ideally, you are supposed to place the HB load on the bridge so that it moves along the bridge. Then you now get the maximum, the bending moment that gives you the highest effect. You know the location that gives you the highest effect. But if you want to analyze it statically, what you can do is you can cut a section along the bridge. Cut a section, you can see section. If you look at the cross section along the bridge, the first diagram here, this is the support of the bridge. Then you run your HB loading along the bridge. But in this case, it's going to be per axle. You know, we have four axles. So it's going to be per axle. And the distance between them has, is already given as 1, 1 meters, 1.8, 1.8. And then you can take the distance between the middle one to be 6 meters, just like what we did in this example. So you can see we have 1.8, we have 1.8. This is 1.5 from the middle of the bridge. This is the centroid of the bridge. The 1.5 from this end. And then you have the, where the position where the load is having the maximum effect. And then you now have 3 meters and 1.5. So ad ideally, you are supposed to run a moving load across the bridge. Then when you mo run the moving load, you'll be able to determine the position where the HB load has the maximum effect on the bridge. So that is how you can apply HB load. So HB load is the moving load that is applied across the length of the bridge. And then you are going to make use of the parts that give you the highest uh, effect. So this is all about the HB loading. HB loading is actually given in units, as I've said. So, and then one unit of HB load is equivalent to 30 kN per axle. So let's take an example. Let's say you have an HB in which the, uh, you are going to apply, according to the code, as I've mentioned, the minimum HB load you can apply is 30 kN per axle but the most common one that is being applied in practice is 45 so let's say you apply a 45 kilonewton a 45 unit of sorry 45 unit of hb load so what is going to be the value of the load per axle so since one unit is 10 kilonewton per axle so you can say 45 units just simple mathematics. This is going to give us 450 kilonewton per axle. So let's say you want to apply this on a software. If you want to apply it on a software, that is you apply it in 3D form, the way it is. So that means per, per wheel is going to be divided by 4 because in each axle we have 4 wheel. So if you divide this by 4, you have 1, 1, 112.5 112.5 kilonewton so this is the amount of load you are going to apply on each of this wheel so here is going to be 112.5 the same thing here here and here and the same thing applies to this 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 and so on to the last wheel so let's say you want to apply this on a 2d form so let's say this is your bridge this is your bridge length. For example, this is the loaded length of your bridge. So, and then, uh, let's, so you are just going to apply, this is a 2D form. So this is going to be 450 kilonewton because in 2D, if you cut a section like this, so what you are going to be seeing is this 450 per axle. Then you have after 1.8, you have another 450. 
then since the six meters is the one that gives the most adverse effect so if you use six meter difference then you have another 450 then 1.8 again then you have 450 so this is how you can determine the amount of hb loading you apply on the bridges so as i've mentioned earlier hb loading and moving load you apply them across in such a way that the the load is moving along the bridge and you are going to pick the position that gives the most effect on the bridges thank you see you next time but before you go kindly subscribe to this channel you can share the video to your friends if you want to learn more about IRA bridges. Thank you. See you in the next one.